conservative U.S. Supreme Court to decide on race, elections, and freedom of religion issues this month. As the Supreme Court races to issue all outstanding opinions by a self-imposed early July deadline, there is little doubt that the conservative majority is prepared to continue the rightward trajectory in areas concerning affirmative action, election law, and LGBTQ plus rights. The liberal justices behind the scenes are undoubtedly trying to figure out how to best utilize their fire firepower in dissent. They could also be working feverishly to pick off a conservative vote or at least narrow the legal scope of an opinion. The court is considering whether colleges and universities can continue to take race into consideration as a factor in admissions, a decision that could overturn long-standing precedent that has benefited black and Latino students. The lower court ruling invalidated Alabama's congressional maps under section two of the law and ordered new maps to be drawn with an additional majority black district to account for the fact that 27% of the state is black. The lower court held that the state's maps violated section two of the VRA Voter Rights Act, which bans discrimination based on race. The Supreme Court is also considering two challenges to President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program, an initiative aimed at providing targeted debt relief to millions of student loan borrowers that have that has so far been stopped by illegal challenges. I don't know what to start. I mean, there's so much uh, on the line here with the Supreme Court, and it's just a reminder that it's important that we vote because mm -hmm. you, I get it. We're, it's not a honeymoon. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Joe Biden, but the judges do matter in this case. Um, and we're going to probably see a couple of our rights get taken away this this month. I'm just going to go out and say it. Maybe you'll have a justice or two that comes to their senses and say, you know, we're, we're not going to pretty much impoverish everybody because I have student loans. I have student debt. And Biden's plan, um, while it's not the furthest, it is helpful. And what the Republicans are saying, what the, the right is saying, what those justices are saying or will be saying soon, is that we don't care if you can afford your student loan payments. So we don't care what your financial situation is. We want you to suffer. Mm. And that's the truth. Mm. Mm. Are there four more terrifying words in the English language than conservative U.S. Supreme Court? Just, I get chill, chill, chills, absolute chills. Well, I'm, I'm wondering with all of the attention that's on the Supreme Court right now, you know, both for their actions out of court, um, including Justice Thomas' um, behavior of taking, you know, millions and millions of dollars not reported, Wait. which is required. Thomas is on, on the take? <gasps> yes. A grifter. Um, oh, wait, it's not. <laughs> and, you know, and the tarnished image that they came in with that um, I'm wondering if they'll have any sense of their position in history of looking at some of these things. Um, I unfortunately do think that the one that's going to have the most trouble is the student debt relief because of the powers uh, of the president to be able to do that. So that one is probably the most in jeopardy. Um, but from just, you know, a human rights interest, um, you know, I do think, you know, obviously affirmative action um, just carries so much more weight about, you know, what has happened in our in our in our country and continues to happen in our country that to say that affirmative action um, to be, you know, not um, not and not able to be used is 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 would be would be a terrible decision and actually a lot of white people use affirmative action i think i don't know the exact number on this but just like food stamps every there's a saying the right has where it's it's the black people on the food yeah. stamps it's actually mostly white people on food stamps absolutely but in this case uh, you know they think of affirmative action and you think it only applies to black or latino students mm -hmm. um, or sometimes uh, asian american students but a lot of white people utilize affirmative you know action. it's interesting to me um it's how uh governor uh, desantis has become so powerful because he's changed the narrative approach where there is wide there is a very significant acceptance to the conceptual idea that he is saying somehow he has been able to convince a reasonable number of people that the overwhelming white male majority is somehow discriminated against <laughs> and he has sold this concept using the phrase of woke and, and the free state of Florida and mask and, and don't vouchy my, <clears throat> my Florida, et cetera, and so on, to convince um, a reasonable number of people, including women, which is a shock to me, um, that somehow white older men are oppressed. <laughs> and, and I assure you, I'm not oppressed. <laughs> um, but, but he has changed the narrative in a very substantial way to this conclusion. Unfortunately, 
um, affirmative action is probably going to go down in flames in this Supreme Court um, uh, ruling month. Um, student debt, I make a prediction, ha is dead on arrival, mm -hmm. is dead on arrival. And uh, all of these actions are because um, uh, principally at the end of the Obama administration, the court was fundamentally changed. And because uh, Hillary Clinton didn't become president of the United States, uh, Trump was able to appoint three justices. And in combination with the three justices, one of which would, would have been a Obama appointee, we're suffering with the loss of affirmative action, the loss of student debt, uh, whatever other related LGBT issues that are going to come, but worst of all, the ability to reframe uh, Christian mm -hmm. nationalism in America to a conclusion that it seems reasonable that white older people are being discriminated mm -hmm. against. These yeah. are all the consequences of the loss of that election mm -hmm. in 2016. There's something Maxwell Frost said recently. I can't say it on, la <laughs> on here, but I think it very much applies to Ron DeSantis at this moment. <laughs> yeah. There, I have to say, part of the loss is due to our community. It's due to mm -hmm. us. We, and honest, uh, any the civil rights movement in general, we were given so many tools that we could have utilized from 1963 on that were designed to end generational poverty that we have not enacted and put into place. And we've long since forgotten about them. Things like community land trusts and different ways of actually creating home ownership for vulnerable populations that end generational poverty. But we don't talk about these things. We focus on what we don't have. But we have a treasure trove of things that we could put into place today that could change our mm -hmm. generations to come. But we're looking everywhere else for the answers. They're right in front of us. We've already got them. Why aren't we using them? Why aren't we talking about them? Mm. We're not going to see a change by going after things that are too far out of our reach. We already have things in front of us. Yep. Let's stop whining about it and get to work. Stop talking about it and just do something. Mm. And I blame Democrats too. Mm -hmm. I, everybody says it's, it's the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we had power for a lot, a long time. And Let's, uh, we, 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 we said we in Florida, <laughs> wait, the, the, there's the 800 pound gorilla of failure. The Florida Democratic yeah. Party has failed for a decade. Mm -hmm decade mm -hmm. in terms of recruiting, in terms of money, in terms of being outmaneuvered by the GOP in Florida, you've gotten your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And the result is what we have in yeah. Florida. And the LGBTQ community is taking it on the chin because of the Democrats' mm -hmm. failure. Yeah, and nationally too. There's a lot of things we could have done when we had the power yeah. and we failed to do it. And because we, we, all, we have this belief somehow that everything is gonna pan out great, or Republicans well, really won't do that. New York, do and they New York doesn't feel the way Florida does. Right. California for sure doesn't no. feel the way Florida does. Okay, you're safe, but nationally, we need the Democrats to do a different kind of thing, or, or whoever the constituency is. Mm -hmm. But in Florida, very specifically, we need the Democrats to act differently. We have 15 months now. We'll see what happens, we'll see. But the Democrats have done a really really poor job. In Let's Florida. say that the politicians have done that. We need to remind them they are first civil servants. They're here to serve us. Absolutely. We are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show from Happening Out Television Network. In the model of PBS and NPR, we educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community. With more than 100,000 a week watching on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the stories going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.